Ernie Johnson back here on the show. How are you, Ernie? Rich, I'm I'm just doing great today, my friend. Fantastic. How'd you like having your time? A, having a wonderful day. How'd you like your time in the City of Angels for the All Star Game? What'd you it think was of that? busy as always. You yep. know what All Star All Star Weekend is? Uh, it's just nonstop. We're kind of pushed and pulled and uh, in a variety of ways. And uh, in addition to doing the show, so it's uh, it's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun too. And the weather was beautiful out there. We had the set outside uh, Staples over there near LA Live, and it was uh, it was a lot of fun, man. We had a great time. Yeah, and, plus and, the, you, and the game was fun too. It was. And you also had to learn uh, the bass for Fergie's national anthem, right? You're the one who was playing that one. In the back uh, right there. Yeah, yes. yeah, we could have we could have used a couple more rehearsals. <laughs> <laughs> the game was fun. I thought Ernie that the intention uh, to shake things up was personified at the very end. That it was Durant teaming up with LeBron to beat Steph Curry. Now that is good eats. That was fun to watch and watch LeBron and Car- uh, and and Durant chest bump like they just won the finals together. No, it was it was uh it was a crazy it was a crazy vibe and I you know I was sitting right behind the LeBron's bench, team LeBron. And I was amazed at how many times in the course of the evening there were guys standing up applauding good defense. And and uh, you just don't see that in all star games. And then it comes down to that last possession, and you got a team that has Steph Curry on it, unable to get a shot off before before the games before the game ends. It was uh, yeah, it was it was really uh, it was really an entertaining game. I think it was one of the best I've seen. Yeah, and now comes the uh, second half of the season. The uh, story entering it is what base you can tell the race for the top spot in home court in the west between Golden State and Houston, obviously with Golden State looking up at them right now, but also. Um, for me, Cleveland. You know, let's see uh, if the if the deals have really uh, changed things. If they've re-energized LeBron James, apparently they have. And uh, you know, and this is a team that's hasn't lost since they made the deals. And so let's see if let's see if that's been enough to uh, to get Cleveland back where it sh- where, you know, where it should be uh, in the favorites' role in the in the Eastern Conference. And uh, so those are a couple of them. And, the, and of course, the San Antonio thing is kind of intriguing right yeah, now. Yeah, what but, is going on with that? Is it uh, you I'm, know is you there know, any I've, extra there there or it sure feels like it. It, it it does kind of feel like it, but here's the here's the situation when you're dealing with a guy like Kawhi Leonard who is notoriously quiet. Uh, he's even more so now, and so you re- you know really don't understand where he's coming from. You just you know you read things and you say it and you hear reports from Woj and others that yeah he's been cleared to play, but he doesn't want to play right now because he doesn't want to play through uh, the discomfort right now and. And part of that you understand when you look at a guy who's, you know, next year is a huge year for him because he's got an option for the following season. And so if he's, does he want to play if he's not really ready to come back? He's already tried that once this year and it didn't work. And so, um, you know, then you hear Pop say that, that uh, he doesn't expect to see him. And so I don't, uh, look, I'm, I'm not going to pretend that I know that there's anything going on between Kawhi Leonard and the San Antonio Spurs organization. It's just very strange I can't recall a time when we were talking about, hey, what's going on in San Antonio? You know, is, is, are things not, you know, rosy like they always are? Um, and so I can kind of see, you know, the precautionary stance maybe that Kawhi Leonard is taking here about not wanting to play if he's not ready to play. But, man, that's yeah, you don't often see stuff like this coming out of San Antonio. Yeah, and, and the, the, it's the quote before the line of, I'll be surprised if he gets back this year, that caught my attention, Ernie. And, and that's this one. If by some chance he's going to be pretty late, in, it's going to be pretty late into the season, and it'll be a tough decision how late you bring somebody back, that's why I'm trying to be honest and logical. And because to me, it, it would mean that that you that you'd think Kawhi Leonard would be one of those players where it doesn't matter about knocking rust off. You got to get him out there. Right. Yeah, I mean, you would think that. I mean, he is at that of that echelon of player right. in the NBA where you say, man, if I can get him at all, I'm going to use him. Right. And um, and then to say that, well, you know, I don't know if we can incorporate him. You know, it's going to be late in the year. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah, sounded like a message being sent yeah, is what it sounded yeah. like to me. That's what yeah, it, there are a lot of moving parts in that thing. And I'm and I'm not exactly sure 
how it's all, it's all going to shake out, aside to say uh, that if, if San Antonio doesn't have Kawhi Leonard, then they're out in the first round, possibly. So let's talk about some of the rules changes that's being bandied about in the sports world. Just about a half an hour ago, Zach Lowe of ESPN saying that the league is seriously considering having a play-in, speaking of NCAA tournament, <laughs> uh, a play-in for the 7-8 and eight seed. 7-8 and eight plays each other for the 7 seed, and the loser plays the winner of 9-10 for the 8 seed. What do you think of that, Ernie? Oh, that's the first I've heard of that uh, yep. today. So um, that's you know that would be that would be kind of an intriguing deal. We're talking about a series. Are we talking about one game? One game. Seven plays eight. Wow. The winner gets the seven seed, and then the loser of uh, plays nine ten. Winner for the eight seed. One game each. Wow. And I imagine again, just to, while while you're soaking it in, what I what I my first blush reaction was okay. So that's four extra, if you will, playoff games to be divvied up between. Turner and ESPN, one would assume. And then when you've got a Bulls team that puts out a press release saying, we're going to see what our young kids do, which is kind of putting lipstick on a tanking pig in a way, to be honest with you, <laughs> yes. you know, and they're, they would just be four games behind a 10 seed right now. So to me, this seems like an anti-tanking idea to also get some excitement generated and some revenue generated. Yeah, to me. And, yeah, trying to tell people, the, hey, don't ever think that you're out of it because you may not really be out of it. You may have a chance to make it's almost like the wild card game um, uh, in the Major League Baseball, where you know you you got one game and, and a chance to move on. So um, yeah, it's kind of intriguing. I don't know if I don't know that I've digested it enough to say that's a good idea or a bad idea, but right. it's but it's certainly. Uh, to your point, uh, anything you can do to to make teams feel like there's still reason to play and play hard, um, and, and not try to say that yeah we want to take a look at these guys or as Mark Cuban just came out and said you know he the tanking wouldn't be a bad idea you know I I think I think any time you can try to reverse that reverse that course uh, you know I'm I'm up, I'm up for that. Well, what did you think about what the commissioner floated um, during his press conference that um, the 16 16- teams that make the playoffs just get seated one through 16 based on record regardless I've got, of conference. Yeah, I've got no I've got no problem with that. Neither do I. Uh, no, I and and I was kind of looking at it right now and seeing how how that would impact things as we speak and you know looking at the record of, you know, 30 and 28 with Miami as the number 8 seed right now and and uh, boy the Clippers and the Jazz are in that mix too. So right now you've got like 18 teams that would uh, that would, you know, be in that mix to to make the playoffs. So I don't I don't know if you could want to do both of those things. You know, have a play in game and do the I one know. through sixteen. I don't, <laughs> I, know. I don't I don't know if I I can't wrap my head around all of that right now. But I think the one through sixteen I think sometimes is it would not be a bad idea because because you can have a good year, especially right now. You can have a good year out west or a relatively good year out west and be watching the playoffs while you're seeing a team in the east. Uh, make it in there. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm. I don't have a. I don't have an issue with that. One. Okay, and then uh, uh, as the voice of uh, MLB on uh, TBS, Ernie, and somebody that has been steeped in the tradition of this game as long as you have in baseball with your dad and with you. Um, I don't know if uh, it pierced your world of uh, basketball traveling as well as also just being an all-around great human on a daily basis in the world. Uh, an MLB executive positing an idea to me. Uh, that I mentioned on my show a couple days ago where you could, in the ninth inning of a game in which you're losing, put any three batters you want up regardless of order. I don't know if that no. one has pierced your ears until just now. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not liking. I'm not liking that at first blush. Uh, no, I don't. That that totally changes. It's you know. It totally changes the way you look at things in the seventh and eighth inning as well. When you're trying to look at okay, I want these guys facing this guy because if we get them three up, three down, then I got these guys coming up. No, I, I don't. I don't like that. That's you know that's that's too gimmicky for me. Yeah, that the well, I mean, but it would also the 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 theory is is that uh, when the game's on the line, LeBron's not sitting uh, on the bench just because it's not his turn up. You know, well, that's th- but that's the way. But come on, that's the way. That's the way it works. That's the way it works in a nine-man sport. Come on, you, you can't. No, nah, I too gimmicky, too gimmicky, and and I don't want to turn it into a rock and jock softball game. Come on, let's uh, let's just play baseball. <laughs> so you're saying the three batters you would not put up would be John Bon Jovi, uh, Morris Day, <laughs> and uh... <laughs> exactly. And if you hit it right here, uh, you know you get three extra bases. No, I don't. I don't like that. Okay, no, very good. I'm not. I'm not going for that. Uh, yeah. And then the NCAA tournament's coming up. It's a very exciting time in in your world as always. I love that, man. It's you know what. 
before we ever had a chunk of it, I used to love March Madness just just to hang out and just sit around and watch games and 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 for us to be part of it now for man, it's been years working with CBS. It's awesome, and and uh, I know there are days on those first two days, Thursday and Friday, which were are, are extremely long days in the studio. You know, and, and Kenny and Chuck, you know, will every now and then say, "Man, it'd be nice to take a break." Or I said, "Look, if your boss told you, all I want you to do on Thursday and Friday this week is just watch the tournament." Yeah, you'd say, "Sign me up. We'll do that." And and so. Yeah, it's it's great, and and we're looking forward to having the selection show on TBS for the first time. Uh, Greg Gumbel will be there with me. We'll be down here in Atlanta. It's uh, yeah, it's it's a fun time, and I just I think it's one of those events, Rich, and I love it because it kind of shrinks the world a little bit, and it brings people together, and it you know folks in the office who may not normally talk to each other find each other, you know, standing next to the coffee machine talking about South Dakota State, and we, you know, do I you know you think you're gonna you know should we take them? Is is 15 gonna beat a two? I think and. and Anything that kind of brings people together and, and and they don't always have to be diehard sports fans, I think that's a good thing. And then, of course, offices get torn apart when somebody doesn't know anything about college basketball wins the pool. That's usually oh, what it which is Which is the way it always, <laughs> it always works. Hey, do I have time for one quick story? Go for it. What do you have, Ernie? And, it's, and this is about you. Okay. Um, because I have a friend who's a Delta flight attendant. Okay. And when the Super Bowl was over, uh, you were flying out of uh, Minneapolis okay. uh, on a Delta flight. Correct. Yes, sir. Correct. Yes, sir. And they brought a woman from whose husband was sitting in coach, and they brought her up to sit in first class, and she had the seat next to you. And I just heard from this unnamed flight attendant who said, "This guy was so caring and so helpful for this woman who who needed some help." And and I asked, "Who is this guy?" And they said, "Oh, you don't know? That's that's Rich, Rich Eisen from from the NFL Network." And she just and she sent me this email and said, "What a great guy he is, and and how caring he was." And and so I thought. You know, I sh- I shouldn't just keep that to myself. Uh, next time I'm on Rich's show, I'm going to point out that hey, folks who don't know him, he's the real deal. Thanks, man. Uh, so well done, man. Well I done. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much for for sharing that. And you know, um, I don't know to say except thanks. Appreciate it. You're you the got man. it. You the man. No. <laughs> thanks, Ernie. We all pay it forward, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what it's all any about. Ch- any chance we can, that's for sure. Absolutely, uh, Ernie. You're the best. We'll chat soon. Rich, great talking to you, man. You got it. You got it. That's uh, at Turner Sports EJ. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.